Hello guys. In this video, we will see how we can detect and fetch the outliers from the given data set. Okay. So first of all, what do we mean by outliers? So I have already explained this in my another video, but let me just quickly recap it. Okay. So mathematically speaking, outliers are those data points which doesn't belong to the distribution. Okay. Uh, if you want to understand it in a plain English, you can think of it as a odd man out problem, right? So in a group of individuals, you need to identify the odd man and then you can take them out. So that person would be an outlier. Okay. So in this video, we will see how we can identify outliers in more than one ways. So there are multiple ways. So the first way you can identify the outliers using IQR. It's also called as interquartile range. Interquartile range. Uh, this is the same way how box plot is. Uh, plotted and using box plot also we can identify the outlier side. So box plot uses the same method IQR. Second one is something called as Z score. Third one we can use of we can make use of some machine learning clustering algorithms to cluster the similar data points in one group and the data points which are outside the distribution you can make them as a separate cluster, right? So that's one way. And there is another. ML algorithm in SQLM library called as isolation forest, right? So isolation forest is another algorithm wherein you will specify the contamination percentage. So how many, how much of, out of all the data points, how much you think are the contaminated data? When I say contaminated data, contaminated data, I am referring to outliers. Okay, so these are some of the methods using which we can identify the outliers. So in this video, we will see how we can identify outliers using IQR and will implement in Python from scratch for IQR and Z score. Okay, so to just brief you on IQR, what we do, we consider quartile 1 and quartile 3. Okay, so this is 25th percentile and this is 75th percentile in terms of percentile. Then what we do, we take the IQR range and how do we take the IQR range, Q3 minus Q1. So this will give us a number, okay. And using this IQR, we will find out min value and max value. So how to find out min value, it is simple. The min value is identified as uh, Q1, that's the 25th percentile value minus 1.5 times the IQR range. Similarly, max value is uh, identified as Q3 plus 1.5 into IQR. So once we have min and max value, what we do? We can do the comparison in the given data set. The values which are less than min value and the values which are greater than max value will be treated as outliers. Okay, so this is how you identify outliers using IQR. Coming to Z score, so Z score is something which you can make use of if your data is following the standard normal distribution. Okay, so when I say standard normal distribution, the data would look something like this. If you plot the distribution, the distribution looks something like this. Uh, sorry for that uh, messy diagram. So let me draw that again. So in order to work with Z score, so if you know how a standard normal distribution looks like, so it's a standard bell shaped curve, right? So mean 0, standard deviation 1, right? So if any data follows this normal distribution, not necessarily standard normal distribution, if it follows standard, if it follows normal distribution, we can make use of Z score to identify and remove the outliers. So what data points in this distribution are called as an outliers? So you know that we will divide this into six segments, right? So most of our data points fall within plus or minus three standard deviations away from the mean, correct? So whatever data points are below minus three standard deviation and above plus three standard deviation, we can treat them as outliers, okay? And how do you find out, find out the Z score? So Z score is given by the formula Z score is equal to X minus mean divided by standard deviation. So this is the 
formula to identify z score we will find out the z score for every data point in the given data set okay so what this z score tells us z score tells us within which standard deviation this particular data point lies okay so if we know that the data distribution is normal distribution and we want to cap it at three standard deviation we can set the threshold at three okay so for data points which gives z score greater than three we will treat them as outliers okay now we will see why the z score gives us the uh, standard deviation uh, how many standard deviation away this data point is from the mean so if you just carefully look at the formula x minus mu by standard deviation right so it is just like among the standard deviation that we have within the data we are dividing the entire data from the mean entire data points from the mean and dividing it by standard deviation so it's like this so let's say we have 100 people okay and we have 1000 mangoes to distribute right so if we want to equally distribute this 1000 mangoes among 100 people what do you do you divide 1000 by 100 right so each each person gets 10 mangoes so similarly each data point how many standard deviation away from the mean is identified using this particular formula okay so now that you have understood the basics of iqr and z score we will see how we can implement the same in python okay so let's get started so here i have imported the numpy and i have created a simple numpy array with a range of different values okay so first thing we will implement to identify the outliers using something called as iqr okay so i'll just give the heading iqr inter quartile range okay so you know uh, the formula first we need to identify q1 then we need to identify q3 we need to identify iqr it is q3 minus q1 and then we need to find min value and max value right so we will write a function in python called as define iqr it will receive data as an argument and we will write the logic now so i want q1 and q3 that is 25th and 75th percentile so using numpy i can easily find out this q1 and q3 in this way np dot percentile it's a method the first argument will be the data from which you need to identify the percentile and how many percentiles and what percentiles you need to identify so that is passed as a list so i need to identify 25th percentile and 75th percentile right so 25th percentile will be assigned to q1 75th percentile of this data will be assigned to q3 okay now i can identify iqr using this formula i q3 minus q1 okay and i told you we also need min value and max value so how do we find out min value it is q1 minus 1.5 times iqr and similarly we need max value max value is equal to q3 plus 1.5 times iqr okay so you can treat this as upper bound and this as lower bound in order to detect the outliers within the given data set so now that we have found out min and max value we just need to return the outliers so how you can return the outliers so whatever uh, numbers or the elements within this numpy array less than min value are outliers and same way the numbers or the elements which are greater than max value are our outliers correct so how you can return it so i can say return arr1 of so i'll just write i'll just make use of boolean indexing in numpy array and write the condition that's it so arr1 less than min val or uh, okay or it will be arr1 greater than max val so this will give us the outliers at the both the ends the values which are less than min value and the values which are more than the max value why we need or here so if we give and here 
both the conditions should meet and then only we will get the outliers right but in this case the outliers can be well below minimum value and well above max value right so i'll show you what happens if i just use and here okay so that's it uh, the function completes here now what i'll say outliers using iqr so it's just iqr and i will pass in the array then if i check outliers uh, okay outliers iqr so it's a typo so you see it returns an empty array why because this both condition doesn't satisfy for any of the elements within this so just think right uh, can an element be both less than the min value and greater than the max value no right so that's why we are getting empty array so now if i change it to or i'll get the elements which are outside the bounds okay so uh, if you want to just check the min and max value you can print it out here print min val max val so min val is minus 19.5 max val is 54.5 so if you check the outlier elements so minus 20 it is less than minus 19.5 and 118 120 55 60 so these are all the elements which are greater than 54.5 which is our max value so this is how you can identify outliers using interquartile range now we will implement a function to identify the outliers using something called as z score so i'll just give it a heading z score and i will define a method here so i will call it define z score i'll get data as argument here so if you remember the formula it's element minus mean value divided by the standard deviation so here first i need to calculate the mean value of the data points and then the standard deviation so we will do that so mean is equal to data dot mean so data is our numpy array so i can use data dot mean similarly standard deviation is equal to data dot std okay so now i will create a array empty list where i will be appending the outliers to it okay so how we can find out the outliers i need to traverse each element for element in data i will calculate z score for each of the data points z score is equal to element minus mean x minus mean divided by standard deviation correct and i will compare this to an absolute value of 3 so now if the you can specify the threshold or uh, hard code it or if you want to change the threshold you can create a variable called as threshold and then change the value accordingly okay so right now let me create a variable called as threshold let me set it to 3 because i want to remove the data points which are beyond three standard deviations from both negative side and positive side of the mean okay so i will just set the threshold to 3 and then what i will do i will check with a condition if absolute score of z score absolute value of z score is greater than this threshold i will append that data point to my outliers list so outliers dot append element okay now with this we have completed the implementation of identifying the outliers using z score so now i will say return outliers okay now what i'll do i'll call this method outliers is equal to z score and i'll pass in the array now if i check the outliers there are only two outliers so you see the difference right so different outlier identification methods gives us the different outlier set right so using iqr you are able to find out more than two outliers but in such score you are able to find only two outliers so this is why it is important to understand which outlier identification technique to use when to use and you also should know what to do once you have identified the outliers okay so one basic thumb rule is if the data is following normal distribution it's better to use z score okay so this always works this always gets the data within three standard deviation if you use the threshold three okay if the data is not following the normal distribution if you are not sure of the distribution or the data if it's not following the distribution you can make use of iqr 
okay so this is a standard procedure now there are two more methods uh, i told you uh, to identify the outliers one is clustering and another one is isolation forest which is a machine learning algorithm so for that i need to uh, cover those two topics first separate video and then we will see how we can identify the outliers using those particular methods okay now that we have identified these outliers what we how we can how, how we have to deal with them so there are two ways two ways to deal with them so you can either remove the outliers two ways to deal with them so first one is remove them second one is cap them so when i say remove if you think the data points which have been identified as outliers are causing a lot of problem with your statistics or your it is interfering a lot and degrading the performance of the machine learning model you can directly remove them okay but you can also think of capping them when i say capping them if let's say you are using iqr method to identify the outliers if there are certain values which are less than min value you can replace these values with the min value okay similarly for the values which are greater than the max value you can replace these values with the max value so this is the case when we are dealing with iqr okay now are outliers always the problem just think pause the video for the second for a second and then think uh, is there any scenario where outliers are actually required so if you think think of a scenario uh, i can think of a scenario where we need to identify the financial crime finance crime okay so generally most of the data points will be normal only few data points will be flagged as anomalies when i say anomaly the transactions are not normal so there is something unusual anomalies are unusual so usually these data points will be identified as outliers if you are trying to analyze the analyze and identify the outliers in this type of data finance crime data okay or transaction data fraudulent transaction or something like that okay so in this case actual task is to identify the outliers not to remove them right so it's not always true that outliers are problematic sometimes we are actually in the process of identifying the outliers given a set of data points are they posing any anomalies right or is it a fraudulent transaction or is it a finance crime or it's or is it a market abuse something like this right so do not always have the opinion that outliers are bad of course outliers are bad but when it comes to the ml task or data science tasks we may be running behind only to identify the outliers and flag them instead of removing them okay so hope you have got some idea of what outliers are and how to identify them using two methods that's core and iqr uh, for more interesting contents please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed and if you are liking the content please do give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers so till we see in the next video happy learning bye bye